name. Amen. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Open your Bibles there. We're going to begin, get into the Bible study tonight. Excited? And let me get my notes out here. Thank you, Mrs. Houston. Amen. All right. We're going to start in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 6. We're going to wrap up this uh, Bible study series that we've been doing on Wednesday nights called Back to the Basics. Back to the Basics. We've been studying the basics on Wednesday night of the Christian life. We started out with salvation and talked about what it means to be saved and, and talked about how that we can help others and show them the gospel and things like that and the blessing of salvation. Then we talked about baptism and, and talked about that and then we talked about the local church and talked about uh, uh, soul winning and stewardship and all of that. We're going to end tonight, uh, uh, wrap this Bible study up and begin another Bible study uh, coming up. We're going to talk about servanthood tonight. If you look on the back of that Bible study guide there, I gave you just a rough outline uh, of some things there and just kind of a rough outline of the message tonight. But we're going to start in this introduction about servanthood because after you've been saved, you've been born again and you go through all of those baby steps as a Christian. Uh, next, ne the next question that often I'm asked, and I remember uh, with teenage when I dealt with teenagers, that it was a question teenagers always asked, and it was a question I remember that I asked, and that is, what does God want me to do? You know, where does God want me to serve? So I'm saved, I'm born again, I got baptized, I've uh, joined the church, or I, I've been reading my Bible, praying. So now what? It, what, what is next? Where does God want me to serve? And I'd like to talk about servanthood tonight and kind of help us to understand uh, what God expects of us as a Christian and what, what is that next step? You know, what does God have for you? Because, see, everybody in the room, God has a plan for your life. Amen. And that a blessing. God has not overlooked you. When you were born, God didn't just say, oops, I've got to find something for them to do. You know, you were planned, amen. God knew you were coming 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. He had you on His mind. And so God has something that He wants you to do. But what is that? And how do we find out about it? That's what we talk about, our service to the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 6 talks, uh, we're going to read this verse together, uh, or I'm going to read and you follow along. The Bible says, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. So everybody here tonight, we want to be the servant of Christ. We want to serve Jesus, our Savior. Praise God, we're born again. We've accepted Jesus as our Savior. No longer are we bound for hell, for eternity. We're get, we are heaven bound because of the blood of Christ. But does it stop with just salvation? No, God wants us to serve Him. And then look, that next part, God says He wants us to do the will of God from the heart. So God has a will that He wants you to do. He has a will that He wants you to do, and it's His will. It's the will of God. Amen? So, so to help, help us understand, it's not the pastor's will. So I cannot tell you what God wants you to do for your life. I have no idea because it's, it's God's plan. Amen? I had no idea that at 24 years of age, God would ask me to pastor, and neither did my dad. Had no idea, but it's, it, that was God's will. And I had to go to God to find that out. And so the same for you as your pastor. I can help and will give you some steps tonight to help you towards serving God. But ultimately, I have no clue what God's will is. In other words, if what God has intended. Because everybody here tonight, God may ask you to stay here in Wichita and serve in the church and, and, and support your local church. Some of you here tonight, God may ask you to pastor a church one day. God may ask you to be a missionary. God may ask you to be an evangelist. I don't know. And the, and the blessing is, that's not limited to age. Sometimes we, as, as fundamental Baptists, we get into this mindset of, well, just because I'm over a certain age that no longer can, will God call me. God may call you right now with the family that you have to pack up and be a missionary. I don't know. But I want us to be willing, and that's part of uh, the servanthood. We have to be willing to do whatever God may ask. Don't get stuck in the rut of thinking, I'm stuck where I am and this is where I'm going to be. God may move you. Amen. But that's about 
servants. We're, we want to be the servants of Christ, and we want to do God's will, and then look from the heart. Verse 7, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. It starts by realizing as a Christian that it's God's will that you're after, not man's will. We want to be after, and our, your desire as a Christian should be to be after God's will, not my will. We struggle with that. It's either God's will or man's will, and you have to yield to one or the other. Amen. God may come ask you one day to pack up all that you have and go and be a missionary somewhere. God may ask you to move to a different state and pastor a church. Or God may just move you somewhere to be an, a, a layman. And God may just ask you to go serve in another church. But whatever it is, you've got to be willing to let go of man's will, what man thinks you ought to do, and be willing to give it all for God. That's why it says doing the will of God from the heart. Put your whole heart into whatever God's will for your life maybe. Man will try to tell you, make money. Man will try to tell you to go wherever it's convenient. Man will try to tell you, only go where it's comfortable. You know, man's thinking is, why would you move to a foreign country and, and with no electricity, no running water, as some missionaries do? Man thinks, why would you do that? But God says, I have a plan. Amen. So you as a Christian tonight, we want to study the basic of just being yielded as a servant of Christ, just being yielded to God's will. Every Christian has something that God wants them to do. Now, not every Christian is meant to be a pastor or a missionary evangelist or serve in the ministry is what we call it. Not everybody in the room is meant to serve full-time in the ministry as a pastor. Some are meant to be laymen. Some, God has some that he wants to be deacons. God has some he wants to teach the Sunday school class. God has some that he wants to work in the nursery. God has a spot for you to fill. Amen. But not everybody is for the ministry. So remember that. Just, and, and when you yield to the Lord, it's not always yielding to God and saying, I'm going to serve you, God, in the ministry. That may not be God's will. But whatever, if God did ask you, you should be willing. And so that's what we're looking at tonight. Uh, Ephesians 6, we're going to go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 3. And you can write some of these references down. I'm going to give them to you some more because I'm going to go through a few of them here. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctif sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Then 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Peter 2.15 says, For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. 1 John 2.17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. 1 Peter 4.2, That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. All of these verses have one thing in common, and that's they all address the subject of the will of God. They all have something in there about the will of God because it's a question that we ask. Now, I break it down this way. We're going to break it down uh, this way for you. There is two, two areas of the will of God. And this is how, uh, again, uh, this is just how I kind of help to break it down to give you an understanding. There's two areas of the will of God. You have the general will of God. The general will of God. Again, this isn't uh, on those notes yet. Uh, we haven't got into the lesson part, still just introduction. The general will of God is what God wants every Christian to do. God has a general will that covers everybody in the room. God does not exclude you from this will. Those are the things that we learned about in the last couple weeks. Those are those basics. What is the general will of God for Christians? Get baptized, read your Bible, pray, tithe, be thankful. Be faithful to church and all of these things. And we're going to go through them uh, and just kind of recap a little bit. Those are all the general will of God. Those are things that I can teach you from the Bible that God says he wants every Christian to do. The and then we have the second will, the specific will of God. The specific will of God is what God wants you to do. So I view it this way. There's a general will where God has something for everybody to do. Then there's a specific will of God that God has designed specifically for you. 
There is something that God wants you to do that nobody else on earth can do. God has designed it. There, there are people that God wants you to reach that maybe nobody else can. Okay? So that is the, it is specific to the individual. Amen. When you were made, when God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a will designed specifically for you. We know that Jeremiah uh, talks about that. He says that God knew him from the womb. Amen. John the Baptist was, was uh, filled with the Spirit from the womb. So God has it. The moment you're born, God has a will for you. Now we talked about, and again we go over that general will, the things we covered. When you get saved, you get born again, you accept Christ as your Savior, you get baptized. We talked about that from Matthew 3.1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. And then the verse 13 says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Jesus is our example. We follow the example that Christ set. Before, God did, before Jesus did anything, before Jesus did anything on this earth, he went and got baptized by John the Baptist, so that's why we start with that. And then, number two, we find that Jesus, uh, or we talk about in Acts 17, 11, they read their, you read your Bible, talking about how that they search the Scriptures daily in Acts 17, 11. Then we pray. That's why we have the church-wide prayer meeting, and we, and we preach about having times to pray individually, entering in your closet. Uh, Jesus prayed, Mark 1.35, it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. That's why we covered prayer. Then we talk about giving. We talked about tithe. We talked about uh, how that in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, God says you should be thankful, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Jesus was thankful, Matthew 11.25, it says, And at that time... Or at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Then we talked about the next general part of God's will for everybody is to be faithful to church. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Then we talked about separation. Being separated is the will of God for every Christian. It says, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Then we talked about, next, be a soul winner. Uh, for 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. All of those things we went through, all of those things we covered, keep that in your mind, keep that buried, because Jesus did every one of those things and set the example for every Christian to do. And God wants us to keep those things in mind. Why? Why is it important? That, and why did I cover those again? Because remember this, those things that I listed, if you don't be busy doing the general will of God, God will not show you the specific will for his life. Remember this. I went through all of those things over the last couple of weeks. Why? Because if you as a Christian are not busy doing even the general things, excuse me, I had the wrong side of the platform. This is a specific will. If you're not busy doing the general will of God, God will never tell you his specific will. For instance, I'm a pastor if I was not faithful when I served in my church in Hutchinson and in Longview, if I would not have been faithful to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night like I knew, God would never have called me to be a pastor. If I was not faithful reading my Bible and praying, now it's not saying that I was perfect at doing this. I still uh, continue to grow. But if I was not faithful reading my Bible and praying, God would never have called me to be a pastor. If I was not faithful as a soul winner, winning people to Christ, God would never have called me to be a pastor. If I was not separated from the world, God would never have asked me to pastor a church. And it goes the same for my wife. My wife had to do the will of God, do the general, this, this general thing. She had to do that from the heart. She couldn't do it because I do it. She had to do it because it's what God wanted her to do. God led us together, and then God asked us to do something specific. So you say, I want to know 
what God's purpose is for me. What does God have for me to do right now? What, what, what is God's will? Well, my friend, start doing the general things, and God will show you the specific. I cannot tell you the specific will of God, but I can tell you the general will of God. And I can tell you that if you'll do these things, then God will show you like He did me His specific will for your life. But we want to know where, where to be servants. So we're going to go over a, what should a servant, what should the mind of a servant be? As you do the general will of God, Jesus says in, let me get back to that verse. Jesus says in, uh, oh, where did I have it? I wrote it down, I apologize. Let me get it here. Oh, I wrote, I wrote it down and I missed it. Anyway, I, I forgot. I'll get, it, I'll get it to you. But Jesus said, let this mind be in you. Or Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus had a mind. There was a mind that Jesus had. And the same mind that Jesus had, God wants us to have as well. And we're going to look at that. The mind, the mind, the mind of Christ. And I think I found it. Let me look here. I apologize to you. Man, I thought I was just like, I was so excited and here I am. I missed a verse. Bad pastor. Man. Bad pastor. And I had it memorized. Let's say again. Philippians 2.9. Is that what that is? 2.5. Oh, praise the Lord. There we go. Philippians 2.5. Let me write that down here. So I don't miss that. Thank you, Mrs. Dotson. Boy, she's more spiritual than I am, I guess. Here we go. Philippians 2.5. I apologize. Philippians 2.5 says this. We're going to turn there. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. Boy, that's, that, those are some good verses, amen. One day we'll all bow before Jesus Christ. Every knee, amen. If you're born again or you're lost, the Bible says every knee will bow. For every atheist, their knee will bow. Amen. For every uh, God denier, their knee will bow. Amen. For every uh, false religion, every cult, every uh, false teaching or false teachers, their knee will bow before the way, the truth, and the life. But Jesus served not because he wanted this the, because verse 9, it says, God, hath also, God also hath highly exalted him. He didn't do all of the things that he did on this earth because he wanted to be highly exalted. God says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus is our example. So what was Jesus' mind? Was Jesus serving because he wanted, to, he wanted this, this highly exalted spot to look above everybody and say, look at me, guess who I am, look what I've done. No, the Bible says, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Jesus came to this earth and he gave up a throne in heaven. And he made himself of no reputation. Nobody even knew. The angels had to come and tell people that Christ had come because Jesus took upon him the form of a servant. So God wants us to be servants. In doing His will, we're to be doing it as servants. This is the mind that we're to have. Number one, and, I've, and I'm sorry, I've, all of those, all of those uh, that I gave you was uh, number one, get baptized. That was on that, that Bible study guide. Number two, read your Bible. Three, pray. Four, tithe. Five, be thankful. Six, be faithful to church. Seven, be separated. And then number eight, be a soul winner. I wanted you to write those back down. Those are those general things. Practice those on a daily basis so God can show you the specific will. Now, as you're doing those things, as you practice the general will of God for your life, 
looking for God to show you what He has for you, you're to have this kind of mind. You're to be this kind of a servant. Number one, a serious mind. We're to have a serious mind. You see, Jesus, it says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So that would be letter A under the conclusion. A serious mind. Jesus had a job to do. He had a task. And he knew who he was. And he knew what needed to be done. As Christians, too often we become lazy or apathetic in our mindset to serving God. We don't get serious about serving God. We, we get to where we just play with church. We get to where we just mark church and, and all, of these, all of the general will. We get to where we just kind of mark that off our spiritual checklist every day. Jesus had a serious mind of doing this, the will that his father had. Why? Because souls were in the balance. We've got to get back to having a serious mind that, like Christ had because there are people that die and go to hell every day because Christians don't take serving God serious. Christians just play with church. We just play with separation. We just play with all of these things. And God says that's why our churches are losing the fire of God because we're not seriously serving the Master. Jesus had a serious mind. I believe that Jesus had a good time. I believe that Jesus probably had a sense of humor. You read in the Bible where, because uh, Jesus is the Word, and you read like in Ecclesiastes where it talks about where yeah, Jesus gives a, uh, uh, he gives a verse, he says, where the tree fall, that's where it falls. <laughs> it's a funny verse to me. You look it up, it talks about, and I can't remember it right offhand, but it says where the tree falls, that's where it falls. I believe that Jesus had a, had a humorous mind, or, had a, or had, a, had a humorous side to him, but Jesus was serious about serving God. It's not saying that you can't have fun doing the will of God, and the, we can't uh, enjoy ourselves, but we remember the priority of serving God. Number two, or letter B, a humble mind. Look there, it says, But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. You see, to do the will of God, you have to humble yourself. Listen to me tonight. If you're going to have the mind that Jesus had, you're going to have to understand you may not get the highly exalted praise. You may not get the, the fame and, the, and somebody to look at you and give you a pat on the back. You may have your, to make yourself of no reputation, but you'll have to humble yourself. See, God's will is humbling because it's not always the ordinary. God's will is not always what we think it would be. For instance, for most of us, God's will would, that, would be that we be millionaires. <laughs> I know that's what my will would be for myself, amen? But that's not God's will. Now, God's will is for me to tithe, but God chooses how to bless. I have to humble myself to accept the fact that whatever God gives me is what God knows I need, amen? God knows what He can trust me with. I have to humble myself. See, a lot of times... We will not, as Christians, we don't submit. You pay attention here. Look. We won't submit to God, and we won't say, yes, Lord, because we're too prideful, because we don't want to do what God asks. God asks you something to do, and we think, why? Why go soul winning? Why pray? Why read my Bible? Why be in church? We have to humble ourselves and say, yes, Lord. Why do all those things? Why get baptized? Why join the church? Why do these things? Why do that? Why do this? Why God? Why God? Why God? You have to be like Jesus and just say, not my will, but thine be done. You see, you'll never get to this side of God's will of you for your life. You'll never get over to here and be able to look back and say, wow, look at how God's used me until you're willing to humble yourself and say, yes, God, I'll do that. A lot of times we, we forsake. Amen. 
Now, again, not saying that all of these things you'll master. I still over here working on praying more and working on reading my Bible more and all of those things. But practicing those on a daily basis and having that time that you give to God and God knows your heart and humbling yourself and allowing God to do, to do that work in your life. But when you humble yourself, when you realize that it should be God's will, not mine, then look what happens. It says in verse 8, and he, he humbled himself and a result of being humble, it says, and became obedient. So because Jesus, the Bible says he was in the form of man. In other words, God had a, the Father had a will for his Son. Even though Jesus was the Son of God, Jesus was the Father, or Jesus was uh, God, God in the flesh, and him and the Father and the Holy Spirit are equal, but he formed himself as a man, so God gave, the Father gave him a will. That's why Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus wanted to show us an example of how to live this life in this flesh. And that's, be, and that's how we have to humble ourselves first. When we humble ourselves, we will become obedient. The reason Christians are not obedient is because they don't humble themselves. Boy, I know that's true in my life. A lot of time I messed up. You know why? I was not obedient to God because that's, and that's because I thought I knew best. Boy, you know, I found out real quick. God's way is the best way. And you know, in Christians, sometimes we're stubborn, aren't we? Let's all admit it. We're all stubborn. Amen. And we know what God wants. And we say, no. And we know. But God says, when you humble yourself to Him, you'll become obedient. I've learned this. I'll never be obedient to God as long as I remain prideful and as long as I think that I know better. You'll never, and that's why God will never ask you to do the specific will that He has for your life. He'll never ask you to serve Him in a greater way. Why? Because He knows you wouldn't obey. We think, well, God, I'd pastor. God says, have you been reading your Bible? Well, God, I'll be an evangelist. Well, have you been soul winning? Well, God, I'll, 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 I'll be a missionary. Wherever you want me to go, I'll do it. God says, how's your prayer life? God knows if you won't obey here, we won't obey here. This is why... I know I've been in trouble many a times. Even as a young man, only 24 years old. Because I thought I knew better. God says, nope. But we have to humble ourselves before Jesus. You see, that's why in verse 10, we're going to bow before Him. You're going to have to bow before Jesus now, because if you don't, you will one day. Jesus says, why don't you just humble yourself now? Because one day you'll have to stand before him and humble yourself. Say, well, God, I guess you really did know better. God, I wish I would have. That's going to be the theme in heaven for many Christians. You see, God wants your theme in heaven to be, boy, I'm glad I did. But most Christians are going to say, I wish I would have done more. Boy, God, I wish I, I, would, I wish I would have told my family. God says, everything you need to know, it's right here. Get in the book. Get in God's Word. Everything we've taught, all the basics that we went over, they're all, it's in the book. Your wife told me about that. It's in the book. And you start with that, then one day God will say, you know what? That's a servant I can use. I can do something with that servant. I could do something with that guy. I could do something with that lady. But you're going to have to humble yourself to these things. As long as you remain stiff-necked, the Bible says. You ever see children? Adeline, man, she's only 11 months. And she's already figured out that stiff neck thing. 11 months. You know why? It comes natural to us. 
And I have to break her will. You have to break your children's will. You can't let them think that they know better. It's like when she tried, she tried to put her finger in a light socket the other day. I thought, not already. Good night. I told her no. I gave her a whooping. Not really. I just, I just tapped her and I said, no, ma'am. And she went, <laughs> and she can walk, so she goes, <laughs> and then she starts mouthing. I thought, what? She goes, <laughs> Get down! That's what she says to me. You know, it reminded me of Christians. God comes over to us, and God says, No, sir. <laughs> but God, why? But I like doing that. And God's like, I'm just trying to help you grow. Because when you get older, when you mature... Boy, I've got some big things in store. But you know why America's a mess? Because our young adults aren't doing nothing. We sit at home. We don't work. You know why nothing's getting done for God? Because we don't work. We're not serving. The Bible says we're to be servants. It's a work that we have to do. But so much of God's will goes undone because we're too busy being children. Jesus, or Paul said, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said, I would that you would teach. And he said, I'd give you the meat. He said, but you have to be fed with milk. Paul said, sad, you should be a mature Christian. But I still have to baby you. That comes because as Christians, we don't want to humble ourselves. I know I've been there. God says we have to humble ourselves and be obedient and allow God to mature us. Some of you, God wants you to be Sunday school teachers. I'm excited. As a pastor, God gives me a vision. I look and see what God maybe might do with you. I go, God, I, we got to do this. we got to do that. But God will only lead the pastor as God knows you are mature enough. See, until we're mature and until we grow and we get to this area where God can ask us to do something and you say, you know what, pastor, God's been dealing on my heart about serving him. I remember when I told my dad, I said, you know what, Dad? I said, I think the Lord's dealing on my heart to be a pastor. I said, you know what? I, told, I said no to God, but God's dealing on my heart. That was the Lord. You know, and I remember Pastor Gray, a friend, uh, he's a pastor in there in Longview. He went to his pastor and said, you know, God's doing something on my heart. I look forward to that. One day when, God, when you come and say, you know, Pastor, God's dealing on my heart. But God will never deal with you until we grow and do these simple things. The simple things, the basic things. That's why it's good to be reminded. We're servants today, amen? God wants you to serve. God needs you. Listen, God needs you. The harvest is plenteous, but laborers are few. Let's not allow God's will to go undone because we won't humble ourselves. Let's not be disobedient, children. Let's serve God together. Get something done, amen? God's got so much, I believe, that He wants to do. So much of your family that God wants to reach. But God can't do it until we humble ourselves, amen? The church can move forward if you're willing to be obedient. Or the Bible says we can just stay still. Oh, I want to move forward. Oh, I want to move forward. I got big plans. Wichita's a million people. Man, we got to build a million seat auditorium. But it starts with us right now. God says, if you'll do the will of God from the heart. Humble yourself to say, you know what, God? 
That's what your word says. And through the authority of the church and through the authority of the pastor, we're going to get it done. And we'll do it. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, sure do love you.